The original Sananju was clearly based with royalty and sophistication in mind. Red, angular, fast. The original Red Sananju is a newer design, but one I would consider to be a classic. It's been a very popular design since we first saw it back in 2008. The Red Sananju is a mobile suit perfect for its lineage as an ace pilot mobile suit designed to be piloted by Char Aznable, but in this case, it's his literal clone. Taking one look at the Sananju and we can see design cues from all sorts of Char specific mobile suits that he has piloted in the past, like the Sazabi. But what happens when we strip the design of its Red Comet flare? What if we took the regal look off the Sananju? What if we did our best to make the Sananju look as militaristic as possible? In that case, we would get the Sananju Stein. This is the third time the Sananju Stein has been released in Master Grade form. Our first look at the Sananju Stein was back in 2013 with the original Sananju Stein for Ka. This release served as background lore to the Red Sananju that we know and love today. The Sananju Stein was created by Anaheim Electronics to test out Psychofame technology. Neo Zeon broke in and stole two Sananju Steins being tested on. One was heavily retrofitted into the Red Sananju, while the other was outfitted with some Neo Zeon sleeves markings and remained mostly untouched. The second time this mobile suit was released in Master Grade form was in 2019 to coincide with the release of the movie Gundam NT, which features the Sananju Stein sleeves version. It is more or less the same as the 2013 version with a handful of extra parts to recreate the sleeves markings on the arm and the chest. As such, not much was changed and the 2019 version required the use of stickers, water slide decals, or painting techniques to separate the white from the black on the sleeves markings. Like all other Gundam kits, your thoughts on the design are subjective. Today we're going to take an objective look at this third release of the Sinaju Stein and see how good of a job it does replicating the design of the mobile suit in model kit form. With the intro out of the way, let's get into the review. The Sinaju Stein NT Verka demands a whopping 33 runners be included to create this model. There are 516 pieces total included on the runners. However, these runners are mostly recycled from previous releases, including the 2008 Sinanju Verka release, as well as the 2013 Sinanju Stein release. Because there is so much older runner reuse on this kit, not every piece is used for assembly. This leaves 96 parts unused when everything is assembled. The S1, S2, T1, and T2 runners are all brand new to this release itself. The previous 2019 MG Sinandru release added the Q and R runners. Runners A through P are all old runners and this is all inner framing and mostly body armor pieces. If you've built previous Sinandrus, then you've basically already built this one. But these new runners do add some appeal that we will get into a little bit later in this review. Like I had just mentioned, if you built a Master Grade Sinanju in the past, then you've pretty much built this one too. The added bonus of this kit is added color separation. The Kotoki style markings that come with the water slide decals, as well as the added interview with Kotoki in the manual. There was nothing that gave me any headache with this kit during assembly. Everything went together nice and smoothly, and all the parts feel tight and solid. The Master Grade Sinanju is a classic case of if something isn't broke, then it doesn't need to be fixed. This is a very easy snip and send type of build, and is easier to assemble to its full Neo Zeon sleeves version on this release over the 2019 release. One of the drawbacks for some builders may be the lack of really anything substantially new here because the bones for this kit lie in a master grade pretty much from 2008, the articulation remains more or less the same. Some may call this lazy, but the articulation does do a serviceable job today. Let's go over that now and see what they might have been able to approve upon with this release. The head can look up, but not a stellar amount. It can also look down just a bit. 
just enough to give it an aggressive, pissed off look. The head can tilt slightly left and right. The head can look left and right really well while looking natural. And the head can rotate 180 degrees, but it has to be at somewhat of an upward angle to do so. The head articulation is decent considering the design is quite restrictive. The mobile suit itself has a big chin piece and a rear neck guard piece, as well as the collar on both sides. I would consider this articulation adequate for the design as it is quite cramped up here, but you can still pull off some decent poses with the head and it looks natural and not really too funky. The torso section is probably what is most affected by the reuse of older frames. There's really no usable articulation in the torso. There is a very slight ab crunch going forward, as well as backwards. The weight of the upper torso with the arms in the backpack almost keeps this swinging forward and re-steadies itself. It really doesn't hold any poses in the torso whatsoever, just ever so slightly. The same goes for the articulation for the left and the right. As you can see here, it's very slight and it doesn't really remain. It kind of returns back to its original state. The torso does spin, but the skirt armor really does prevent it from going too far. Now, you can force it, but you are going to scrub here. But it can do a full 180 once you work it past that point. Just be mindful, the skirt is going to have to move, and if you paint this, that's going to be a scrub point that will rub paint off. A neat gimmick in the torso is the ability to open up the cockpit hatch, and as you can see, Zoltan is up there piloting the San Andrew Stein. The waist does have some fairly hefty armor. The torso and waist sections on most Xeon mobile suit design is usually fairly weak and cumbersome for poses, with the skirt armor being tight and long in both directions, it's difficult to get the articulation to be really dynamic while working within the confines of the design itself. The St. Andrew Stein is no stranger to constraint as we have already seen the skirt armor giving the torso rotation some trouble. That being said, the skirt can open up quite a bit despite all this. The rear skirt can come out just a little bit to about a 15 degree angle. The side skirt armor prevents this rear skirt armor from coming out anymore. You can see it hit up there on the side. The side skirt can also open up to a 35 to 40 ish degree angle here and it's really really loose and we'll get into that in a second. The front skirt is least affected and can almost come out to about 90 degrees where it hits is up here on the torso. All of the skirting here is on a single ball joint that connects directly into the skirt itself so the articulation is somewhat limited there because of the older design of a single ball joint without any articulation on that ball joint or on the skirt itself, allowing it to get out of the way. Skirts similar to the Seed Master Grade series or even the real grade new and high new Gundam would have been really appreciated here as it would have allowed this skirt armor to get more out of the way and allow better articulation for the leg. This is the last bit of articulation for the waist before we get into the leg. They're kind of linked, so we're gonna go straight from waist to leg articulation here. The thigh piece where it connects on the waist is on a swivel joint, so it can swing backward and it can swing forward. Now, what this allows us to do, if it's fully swung forward, we can move the leg quite a bit back. You can see where this 35 degree angle on the side skirt doesn't affect the leg and we can almost get a full 90. See how this leg is straight? This is almost flat. This is almost a 90 degree angle. So this waist swinging is really the saving grace here for the articulation. And we can do the same for forward. And as you can see, we have basically almost another 90 going forward. In fact, if it wasn't for this knee here, we probably would. So let's swing that, boom. There you go, excellent. So the leg can swing out about this far, not enough to get a split, 
But what happens is, is as you pose it like this, you have a tendency to pop this skirt off. So this skirt is a little loose just from me playing with this kit with the articulation for this review. So this skirt is a little bit looser. Getting into leg articulation, there is a rotation up here on the thigh itself and it can go 180 degrees, which is very nice. If we open the skirt and bring the leg forward, we can see that the knee joint has two 90s on it and you can basically touch the calf to the thigh. You also have some great armor separation gimmicks in here that really show off the details of the panel lining that you can do within. So I would definitely panel line those if you're going to build this as it shows itself off. It's really cool to see those details pop out. Now there are a few thrusters on the leg. On the back here we have this thruster that's on a double joint so it can pop out and then this can pop open. And this thruster here can slide out on a swivel joint and can rotate 180. This will help you pull off some dynamic poses. Let's say the St. Andrew Stein is flying forward. You can move this so it's not static with the leg and that really helps out a lot. The feet can swivel to the left and to the right quite a bit. That's a pretty decent swivel on the leg itself. This ankle armor can open up, allowing you to have way more foot lean than you would anticipate. That's quite a bit of foot lean. This would be perfect for like a taking the knee and crouching type pose. The unfortunate thing with this much bend is that you can sometimes pop this piston out, so be mindful of that. The toe can bend downwards, then it can bend upwards, and then there's a midfoot bend which gives you that lean. The shoulder articulation is relatively good. The shoulder armor can go up and then this part can swivel up and the part of the arm can go to a T pose. This is about all you get. You can't go any further upwards than that. The shoulder armor is on this swivel joint so that if we spin the shoulder armor around and then spin this arm, we can have the mobile suit bend his arm across the body. The armpit connection can swivel completely 180, but you will have to move this thruster out of the way unless you want to hit parts, but it is relatively decent. There is a swivel up here in the armpit itself at the bicep, which can go 180, and the elbow is double jointed at a 90, so we can get a full bicep curl. Now inside the wrist, we can open that up, and we have some room in here for beam saber storage, which is really nice. It's cool to be able to load the mobile suit up with all of its weapons. The arm articulation is relatively good. The only issue is just the shoulder joint is a little funky because the shoulder and the arm are two separate pieces. So the shoulder goes on first and then the arm goes in and it can swivel inwards. So sometimes it makes putting the arm and the shoulder a little difficult, but it is manageable once you've built one or two of these model kits. The kit comes with these emotive movable hands, which are not Great. These are very stiff when they are molded, so even putting them into this position, they will pop out up here at the knuckle. You have a left hand, you have a right hand, and you have one shooting hand from the 2019 version for the gun, which is nice because if all we had was these emotive hands, it would have a very difficult time holding this and holding this, especially if they are combined. So I really wish Bandai gave us better hands because these hands are absolutely terrible. I've always hated the emotive hands. I feel like 1100 is just a scotch too small for these to really be reliable. These, these will always be a con in any kit they are released in. I absolutely hate them and I prefer the way that they have master grade hands now. It's much better. These hands are just absolutely abysmal. Getting into the backpack articulation, these outer thrusters are on a slight swivel, and these inner thrusters are not. They're static. The upper thruster shroud is on a swivel, 
and the lower thruster shroud is on a swivel as well. So you can fully open these up, make it look like it's going for a high speed attack. The stern booster is on a swivel and a ball joint so it can do everything a ball joint can do. Both thruster sides are on a type of L bracket on a ball joint so it can swivel outward like that and it can swivel inward which is helpful for posing. It's a little funky to get this backpack to play nice simply because everything's a little bit on a ball joint so if you want it to look symmetrical you're just going to have to play around with it a little bit but it doesn't give you too much gruff as you move it around so it's really not terrible at all. Now that we've gone over articulation, let's go over the pose ability. The bones of the model kit are from 2008, which I know sounds old as it's more than a decade old. And we did touch a little bit on how the torso and the skirt articulation does limit some poses. However, it's still able to pull off some decent poses. As you can see, I was able to pull off a kneeling and shooting pose, which was able to fully utilize all that toe articulation. With the same pose, I was able to have the arm reach all the way across and hold the beam rifle with both hands. Now I know that this beam rifle pose does look a little awkward, but that's more of an issue with the beam rifle itself because the stock is rather long and rather wide, which makes it difficult to fit into that armpit pocket. But it still is able to hold the beam rifle with both hands, which not every kit can do the same. The mobile suit is able to hold all of its weaponry with little issue. Now the gun does have the shooting hands, but the beam tomahawks have to use the emotive hands to hold the tomahawks. This is okay at times, but my right hand is a little loose. The extra weight makes the hand want to pop out all the time. So doing any poses with the beam tomahawk takes some extra care. I do think the connector for the beam tomahawks is a little too long in the middle. It makes it a little awkward for the mobile suit to actually hold it. It's a very, very long handle once they are combined and you do need that middle piece in there to combine them. You can't just go from beam tomahawk to beam tomahawk end. All that thruster articulation really shines on this kit as you can pull off some dynamic flying poses by moving the thrusters in ways that the mobile suit would be flying in. The kit has absolutely no problem standing whatsoever, which not every version of the Sananju can say the same. Sometimes the Sananju backpack can be really back heavy, which makes standing a little difficult and it can topple over backwards. And that's more of an issue with the real grade Sananju as well as the master grade Sananju with the Takumi Studio add-on because it adds a lot of extra weight to the back. Granted, the thrusters on the Sananju Stein aren't as big as the red Sananju, but it is something to note. Just sometimes backpacks can be a little too heavy, and the Sananju Stein seems to be a happy medium. I am relatively impressed with the posability on this kit. I think it services the design really well, and it's nice to build a master grade kit that I'm not going to have to worry about toppling over or stability issues. It is a really, really stable build and it can hold these poses really, really well. The only issue being really the hands and that torso articulation being pretty weak. You could definitely pull off some better poses if the torso articulation was even slightly better than what it is now. But I understand working within the confines of the design can sometimes make things a little difficult. The kit comes with a myriad of accessories. It includes the classic Sananju Bazooka. It includes the new Sananju Beam Rifle. Now what's interesting about this Beam Rifle is this white shroud can come off and reveal the original Sananju Beam Rifle within. Along with that comes with the scope that goes onto the original Beam Rifle. It comes with the same grenade launcher. So this grenade launcher can mount onto the shield, but it can also mount onto the Beam Rifle as well. It comes with two beam tomahawks as well as a connector piece to combine them into one long beam tomahawk. The kit also comes with a nice shield that has the color separation of the insignia there. And in my opinion, we have better connections on the shield for the tomahawks to connect to the shield. It comes with effect parts for these long tomahawk slash beam sword type beam effects. 
as well as two smaller tomahawk type effects. The kit also comes with two regular beam sabers and two effect parts for these beam sabers. Rather than the red Sinanju, these are circular and not flat. This kit comes with a decent amount of armaments and weapons, including some mounting options that are new that we have not seen on Sinanjus in the past. The kit has one instance of color correction, and that is on the leg thruster bells. These little square areas should have red in them per the instructions of the manual. I am not a big proponent of using stickers, and I opted out of both paint and stickers for this as I feel the gray looks fine as it is. There is also some line art that supports this remaining gray and not red. Here are the stickers provided for the kit to fill these in for the red. You can use these if you want to, but they're going to get creased and they're probably going to show somewhere within there. So if you really wanted this to be red, I would probably just find a way to paint it. Now that is all the color correcting that there are on this kit. Both the older Sinanju OVA, the Sinanju Verka, and the Sinanju Stein NT from 2019 required color correction for the sleeve markings. This meant that you needed to use a sticker, water slide decals, or the reverse wash painting technique to get this color separation. The stickers took all the depth out of it, the water slide decals were difficult to apply, and the reverse wash is more of an advanced painting technique, so it's not super easy for newcomers to accomplish. The S1 runner and the S2 runners are the addition to this kit that this design needed, as it creates the color separated pieces for this, so this white and black is color separated, this white and black is color separated, and this white and black is color separated. On the 2019 version, this is a simple black piece, simple black piece, and simple black piece. These pieces go together very nicely and are very, very snug. And as you can see, it does pull off the look quite well. Ultimately, in my opinion, this is what makes this kit more worth it over the 2019 version. The added decals are a nice bonus, as is the Kotoki interview, but these color separated pieces really make this kit more enjoyable to me. I didn't have to stress out about using advanced paint techniques, which can be somewhat difficult to learn. I didn't have to stress out with Bandai's decals to replicate these, and I didn't have to use stickers, which, let's be honest, for these sleeve decals, don't look very good. As you can see here, there's a small bit of black here on this white. And up here around this diamond, there's a small bit of black and up here in this wing as well. Now I didn't panel line this on purpose. You can see here that these are connected this way from the molding. There's also no lines there on the wing type of looking insignia. I used a panel line marker to come in and add that black in there to make it more accurate. As you can see, you can see the little piece of plastic in there and it's very, very precise, but a Pigma 003 will fill that in very, very nicely and make it fully accurate. These are some very intricate and detailed designs and there's no way to fully make this fully color separated by adding these little tiny black pieces in there. It's not a dock against the kit at all whatsoever, just something to note for your build to fill those in a little bit. Let's talk about the included decals with this kit. I know it's a big joke to make fun of Bandai decals and their quality, but let me tell you, I had an incredibly difficult time with this kit and these decals. To preface, my workflow hasn't changed in over 100 plus built kits. That includes for cause, that includes aftermarket decals like Delpy and G Rework, as well as regular Bandai decals that you can buy separately. Maybe I just had a bad batch of decals, but who knows, there are some decals on this kit I was unable to install simply because they got ruined while being applied. I had some decals melt with just mark setter setter not softener setter a lot of those issues stem from these long type of decals so if we go over here onto this leg this decal is all the way around this caution is a little bit bigger than this one and that's because 
This one was a leftover and I had to use it because this literally crinkled and melted and had to be peeled off. Up here, this V is all in one piece, which is a horrendous layout. This should have been separate pieces because there is a sizable gap here. You get the V here lined up perfectly and then it's not lined up with that square or that square. So then you go to move it and then boom, rip. And then as you're doing this, remember you're, you're on a little bit of a time crunch as you're moving the decal around. So there's only so much you can do. So I lost the V up here. Luckily I was able to hide its absence with this somewhat okay looking little insignia there. The decal here and here on the thruster both melted as I was trying to move them around and applying them. There is a long caution hash mark decal here that was unable to be applied. It just came right off. These decals also lifted up a lot just with the cotton buds. And I've never had decals melt with just setter before. I've never experienced that. And I've built hundreds of kits, so it really didn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm gonna chalk it up to a fluke, but if you go to apply one or two decals on this kit when you get it and you realize it's not going great, um, get some aftermarket decals and sh sh save yourself some headache because this kit was going really well. I was really enjoying my build time with it. And then I had a giant wall of frustration once I got to these decals. It was not super fun. Here's some G rework decals I have just for my 2013 Sananju. And I always try to do out of the box builds on this channel for the review. So you can see what the kit comes with, with the whole box and everything. And as we can see here, we have Neo Zeon insignias here. And this is even for the 2013 Sananju. So this works for both Anaheim Electronics or Sleeves version of the Sananju Stein. So if you do have issues with the St. Andrew Stein decals that come with this NT version. There are places you can go to get better decals. G Rework are some of my favorite, but Delpy is also really good as well. And plus G Rework has these extra stylings here that really kind of fill out the rest of the design and look good, tasteful, but not too much of a race car in my opinion. So I would recommend picking up some G Rework decals just for this guy because in all honesty, I like the aesthetics better, but it's up to you. It's it's your kit, it's your build. Build it how you want it, but if the decals frustrate you, then get something else. This kit has been fully panel lined, as I'm sure you've noticed, and I'll go over my workflow of panel lining in a future video. This has been fully panel lined with Tamiya panel liner, and I had to use a pen a handful of times just to fill this in because these are actual armor gaps, and I feel the panel line here really helps break up all the gray, and it fills the shoulders in much better. It looks really good in my opinion. So in my unboxing video, if you noticed, I said this looks a little naked. It actually looks really, really good now that everything's put together and fully panel lined. So. I mean, even these little small details here, which I've already showed you, look really great once panel lined. Up here, we have this tiny gap with this little tiny bit. This piece here would probably really only have been possible with a Tamiya fill liner. And you can just see the panel lining really does pull out a lot of details. We even got the feet here inside these little vents. It just really looks really nice once fully panel lined. It just really makes everything pop and look great. It was not difficult. It was super easy to do. If you use the Tamiya pore type, I just would recommend not panel lining it as it's assembled because then that's how pooling happens and how it leaks into the kit and you get cracks. So be mindful with your panel lines and panel line smartly. Now let's talk about the seam lines. There are a handful of seam lines on this kit, none of which are super offensive. We've got this one here on the back of the head, which you can barely see. And this is well hidden with the gray color as well as the matte coat that I put on this kit. So that really helps hide that seam line back there on the back of the head. There is a seam line here, as you can see on the booster, and again, the gray color plus the matte coat really helps to hide that. 
there's a seam line on the bazooka. A new seam line has appeared, and that is here on the cuff, and you can clearly see that clear as day there. Now, you could get away with doing the pinch and glue method. As you can see, even me just giving extra pressure basically takes it out. But this is part of the downfall of color separated parts is that you're going to get the seam line here because it comes together as a clamshell rather than one brace and then one brace. If that makes sense. So, so this would be one piece and that would be one piece on the older version. But on this one, things have to come this way. And that's because this cuff is very square in nature. Taking a look at an official color separated Sinanju from Bandai, this is the real grade version. And because this is angular, it's very circular, we can see that the black goes on top of the gold and the seam line is here. So the cuff links come together as a clamshell there, which hides the seam line a decent amount. Taking a look at an unofficial Bandai kit, we can see that the Takumi Studio for the Master Grade Sinanju does the same thing, and that seam line is there. Again, the black piece onto the gold piece, and then comes together. Every model kit's going to have seam lines, that's just the way modeling works, and closing these would be relatively easy. You can't really hide them as a panel line, like you could do with other seam lines, but if all we have to deal with is the cuff links, and maybe even these boosters here, that's pretty good. The rest of the kit really doesn't have anything that jumps out at you, and that's fantastic. I would also take dealing with a small seam line like this over having to take hours to do a reverse wash and still have the potential to screw it up if you don't know what you're doing. This is still easier to assemble and is better, in my opinion, than the previous 2019 Sinanju release. The nub marks on this kit are relatively easy to clean up. You'll notice them mostly on these darker type of pieces, but luckily this decal is supposed to be placed here right where the nub is, so it hides it very, very well. Up here you can see my worst nub mark in that little chest area, but this one is much better, and I did like a three to four cut method to cut the nub down just to get those darker parts looking better without sanding. So you may want to keep that in your head as you're doing your nipping because some of the gates on these pieces are quite thick. So you'll have to cut it down, cut it down, cut it down, and then use your god hands for the final cut as it gets pretty close, and that's going to give you nubs like this where they're barely noticeable. A gun primer eraser could have gotten rid of that versus this one where I kind of discard the plastic. If this is the worst nub mark I have on this kit, then I think I did a pretty good job. I really don't typically do sanding. I just do a snip and then usually a second snip with the god hands, although this one takes a little bit more just because of how dark the colors are. And it came out looking great with really not a lot of noticeable nub marks. Like I said, up there, it's really kind of the most notable. Not really even many on these thrusters, and these thrusters are in this darker blue color, which would show it like a sore thumb so that is going to do it for my review of the Sinanju Stein NT Verka. The way I see it, this is the third release of the Sinanju Stein in Master Grade form, and it is a solid release. However, they didn't really update anything on this other than the color correction for the sleeves markings, which for me is a big plus and for some other builders out there, especially out of the box builders, that is going to be a big plus. While my decals were subpar, yours may not be, so your mileage is going to vary on that front. I don't have a second version of this kit, so I cannot confirm if it was just a one-off fluke, but just be mindful while building yours that that may be something to look out for. If you already have a 2019 Sinanju narrative version, this may not be the kit for you because you basically already have it. The only difference is the color correction for the sleeves markings. I think it looks really good. I think the articulation is great for it. However, they could have done a little bit more with the skirting 
here I think if they mimicked the opening gimmick for the side skirt how the skirt opens and flaps up like they did with the real grade high new Gundam I think that would have added a lot to this and it really wouldn't have taken that much extra parts especially considering the fact that the waist is almost entirely thrown away on the runner mainly the the parts that are taken for the waist of this are the top and the two middle pieces so i really think if they retooled the waist just a little bit more to give us more than just a runner and a half difference between this and 2019 that it would be more value more bang for your buck and i think more people would be a little happier with this kit because as it sits now there's a lot of lukewarm reactions to this a lot of people saying this is the third time we've seen it you know it's a little little bit of fatigue there with the sananju narrative version however i had a blast building this up until the decals i think you will too I think this is great for people that want a narrative version Sananju without paying astronomical street prices for the 2019 narrative version Master Grade. This is also great for out of the box builders that just want great color separation out of the box and they don't have to deal with different paint techniques or decals or stickers. If that sounds like something you're interested in then I would absolutely recommend this kit. I think it's a great build and you'll have a lot of fun with it despite the bones and inner workings of this kit being old. It goes along with that adage of if it's really not broke don't fix it but I do understand other people's points where they said, you know, you could have done a little bit extra to this release. If you're lukewarm on this release, then just wait for a sale if you really want it and don't want to pay the extra money. Or if you've got a perfect 2019 version, then you really don't even have to get this. In any case, that's going to do it for me and this Sananju NT. As always, a like, a comment, and a subscription is greatly appreciated to help this channel grow and to keep giving you guys reviews of these newer kits. I hope to see you in the next video where we talk about more kits, but in the meantime, stay safe, have fun, and happy building.